What is going on, everyone? Chris from PickDogs.com here with the wraparound. Well, we're going to be breaking down the NHL action going down for you on Saturday, January 20th, 2024. Before we get into that action, make sure you're subscribed to our channel and smash that like button. The wraparound and Pick Dogs today would not be where it is without your guys' love and support. So thank you so much for that. Keep hitting that thumbs up. We just passed 100 million views here on our YouTube channel. So keep, keep it going. Um, tell your friends. Let's make some money together. If you're looking for my best bet, speaking of, head to pickdogs.com. Click the premium picks tab at the top of the page for my best bets on the board. Got a lot of them. It's a loaded Saturday card. 145 games on the College Hoops card. Got uh, some a full full slate of NHL that we're going to be talking about. Um, NBA, uh, NFL playoff action. There's going to be something for everybody. So definitely make sure there's something that you check out. Uh, and whether you just go with a daily pack with me, you can do that. Or what I recommend, go with a long-term pass. This three-day and seven-day passes are going to be cheaper than buying each of Saturday's daily passes individually. And it's going to cover you for all of Saturday, all of Sunday, Monday at the very least if you get the three-day pass, as well as a loaded week of action um, You know, as we move into uh, next week with the seven-day pass. And I've told you guys the last couple of days, I head to Vegas next week. And Vegas is where a lot of myself, you know, Mitch, Jay, myself, when we go to Vegas... That's where the hot streaks usually start. And uh, tell, trust me, you guys are going to want to be on board for that one. So make sure you hop on a long-term pass. But that's later on down the road. That's in a couple days that I'm going. Still got an NHL card to look at today. A full card, 12 games. You know, there's still money to be made. We're not going to wait for it. You guys ready? I'm ready. Let's get into it. Our first game on Saturday's card takes us to the Key Bank Arena where the Buffalo Sabres take on the Tampa Bay Lightning. And the Buffalo Sabres, you know, they've actually won the last three meetings with the Tampa Bay Lightning, including a 3-2 overtime win back on October 17th. But that was then, this is now. And the, the Tampa Bay Lightning, I think, are playing the better hockey right now. Sure, they're still struggling on the road, 8-12-2 on the year. But they have won four in a row. You know, they uh, picked up a win over Minnesota already on the road in, in 2024. And Buffalo, well, you know, they've got back-to-back -back wins. Congratulations, you had 3 nothing shutouts over the Chicago Blackhawks and the San Jose Sharks. Big whoop. Now you welcome the Tampa Bay Lightning to town, a Tampa Bay Lightning team that is still loaded from top to bottom. And I just feel that from a talent perspective, they are the better team here. So I'm going to take the Tampa Bay Lightning at the coin flip price of minus 115. Now we head to the Wells Fargo Center, where the Philadelphia Flyers take on the Colorado Avalanche. And, uh, you know, the Colorado Avalanche is still one of the NHL's best teams, you know, from a talent perspective. You know, they have won uh, seven of their last ten games. They are coming off a 5-2 loss to the Boston Bruins in their last matchup. Uh, and believe it or not, you know, the Colorado Avalanche still have a losing record overall on the road this season at 11-12. and The Philadelphia Flyers, not much better at home, 11-8-2, so an 11-10 and record. But this Flyers team has won five straight. I was on the, the, uh, the Dallas Stars in their first game back on the homestand. Uh, and Philly won that game 5-1 to one in convincing fashion. And right now, from a goaltending perspective, I trust Philadelphia a lot more than I trust Colorado right now. The Avalanche have given up four goals in three straight starts. Uh, the Flyers have given up two goals or less in uh, four of the five games during this current win streak. So I'm going to take a shot here. I'm going to take a shot on the Philadelphia Flyers at a coin flip price of their own at minus 105. Now we go to the Mullet Arena where the Arizona Coyotes take on the Nashville Predators. And this one for me is a little bit of a tough matchup because you have an Arizona Coyotes team back home where they have played their better hockey this season, but they have struggled on home ice. They've lost four of their last five home games up against a Nashville team that has been playing better on the road. They're 12-8-1 and one on the road overall this season. Um, and they've split their last two road games, but they're also 6-3 and three in their last nine. I just have a hard time against the, uh, the Coyotes because Arizona's won both meet, in, uh, excuse me, each of the last two meetings, including a 7-5 win in Nashville back on November 11th. So, you know, rather than try to mess around and figure out a side here, which I, where I genuinely think you're splitting hairs, I do lean towards the Coyotes for the value if it's worth anything. But I'm going to go with the under six in this game. Like I said, I know we saw 12 goals in the first meeting between these two teams this season, but the goaltending has really stepped up for both of these teams in a big way since then. In their last five games, the Arizona Coyotes goaltenders have a 2.33 goals against average. Nashville's goaltenders, a 2.60 goals against average. I think this game is the first to three wins, so I'm going to take the under six in this one.
Now we head to the Canadian Tire Center where the Ottawa Senators take on the Winnipeg Jets. And uh, the Ottawa Senators, you know, back at home where they have played their better hockey. They do have a winning record at home this season at 12-11, and 11, coming off a 6-2 win over the Montreal Canadiens. But so far what we're seeing from the uh, the Ottawa Senators over the course of this homestand is you beat up on the bad teams. I'm not faulting them for beating who's been put in front of them. I'm just saying take the results with a grain of salt. Beat the bad teams and you struggle against the one good team that you played. Colorado came into Ottawa and won that game 7-4. to four. And if you've been following the wraparound, you know my thoughts on the Winnipeg Jets. They've been one, quietly been one of the more consistent and dominating home uh, just teams overall in the NHL. 29-10-4 so far this season. 13-4-2 on the road. We're being asked to only lay a reasonable price here at minus 140 with Winnipeg. So give me the other uh, Winnipeg Jets in this one. They've owned the recent meetings between these two teams. So give me the uh, the Jets on the money line here. Next, we head to Rogers Arena where the Vancouver Canucks take on the Toronto Maple Leafs. And Toronto finally getting a win after having such a rough, rough run of form as of late. Loses a four straight before the 4-3 win over Calgary. You could probably argue Toronto probably could have and maybe should have lost that game. But a video review wiped away Calgary's game-tying goal in the third period. And uh, Toronto rode that 4-3 scoreline to the finish line. Vancouver, on the other hand, they've still won six of their last seven. They're coming off a 2-1 win over the Arizona Coyotes. But here's the thing for me here. You know, the Vancouver Canucks, they've had the upper hand on the Leafs in Toronto, but pretty much home ice has been dom the dominant trend in this matchup. The home team in the last 29 meetings is 26-3. and three. That's a downright crazy statistic. Also, 5-17 and 17 the Leafs are in the last 22 meetings between these two teams. In Vancouver, I'm still not sold on the Toronto Maple Leafs in their goaltending situation right now. And take it from a Leafs fan, that's, I'll, I'll tell you, that, that's the honest truth. I'm concerned about this team, concerned about their goaltending. The Vancouver Canucks just seem to be firing on all cylinders once again. And i got to go with the Vancouver Canucks at home in this one at minus 125. Now we head to the TD Garden where the Boston Bruins take on the Montreal Canadiens. And, uh, you know... The Boston Bruins sort of back to being that dominant home team that we've become, to, you know, become accustomed to seeing year in and year out. And, uh, you know, they picked up a 5-2 win over the Colorado Avalanche in their last matchup. Now they take on an, you know, an original six rival in the Montreal Canadiens who are coming off a loss to the Ottawa Senators 6-2. They haven't fared all that well on the road in recent games. They have provided some value on the puck line, but I don't think this is one of the spots where you can back them on the puck line and feel confident. Uh, the Boston Bruins head-to-head -head in the last 10 meetings, 9-1. and one. They've scored four goals or more in eight of the nine victories. And I just think this one's a, a beat down from the Boston Bruins dished out here. I'm going to take the Boston Bruins on the puck line in this one. Now we head to the Prudential Center where the New Jersey Devils take on the Dallas Stars. And, you know, the New Jersey Devils playing some decent hockey, you know, at home. Yeah, they're coming off a win over the Columbus Blue Jackets, four to one. They will be on the second half of the back-to-back -back for this game. Um, but even so, I still think that the New Jersey Devils can have some defensive success in this game. The Dallas Stars, you know, they scored five goals against the Kings, but followed that up with a, with just one goal against the Flyers in the first game of this little mini road trip that they're on. So, you know, I think that Dallas, you know, will try to put an emphasis back on defense after giving up five goals to the Flyers. And realistically, even with the the bulk of goals for, for Dallas allowed in that last game, they've still got a 2.17 goals against average in their last five goal uh, excuse me, last five games for the goaltenders. For New Jersey, they have a team goals against average of 2.20 in their last uh last five games. So having a total around six and a half, I, I gotta go with the under here. I could easily see this being at worst, at the absolute most, a four to two kind of game here. So give me the under six and a half between the stars and the devils. Now we head to the Enterprise Center where the St. Louis Blues take on the Washington Capitals in a rematch of a matchup that we just saw a couple of nights ago. It ended up being a victory for the Washington Capitals in Washington by a final count of 5-2. to two. And while it's not always easy to beat the same team in the second half, or excuse me, to sweep a back-to-back, -back, um, I think the Washington Capitals can do it right now. You know, the St. Louis Blues, goal scoring continues to be an issue for this team that scored two goals or less in eight of their last ten games. The, uh, the goaltending can only do so much before you have to kind of expect the offense to, to lift up and, and do its fair share as well. And
3.4 is more than two when that's all you're scoring and you can't keep the puck out of the net. Uh, the Washington Capitals have given up two goals or less in four straight games. They're picking up some victories themselves. I think that they get the job done here at a, at a very favorable price. So give me the Washington Capitals on the money line in this one. Next, we head to the SAP Center for a matchup between the San Jose Sharks and the Anaheim Ducks. And uh, if this game wasn't played, would anybody really care? I mean, you have two teams with uh, terrible records. The Anaheim Ducks, 15-28-1. The San Jose Sharks, 10-31-4. Um, so realistically, I'm not probably not going anywhere near this thing, but for the sake of a pick here, I'm going to take the same approach with the San Jose Sharks against the Ducks. I took it with them against the, uh, the Chicago Blackhawks and the, uh, the Buffalo Sabres. You have a Sharks team that scored basically one goal or less in seven of their last 10 and a Ducks team that scored two goals or less in seven of their last 10, two teams that can't score. I don't know how we get to a total of six here. I could see a first to three wins kind of game here as well cashed for us for the, with the Sharks against the Blackhawks and the Sabres. I think it cashes here against the Ducks as well and taking the under six. Next, we head to the T-Mobile Arena where the Vegas Golden Knights take on the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Vegas Golden Knights, despite feeling what looks to be on some nights an AHL lineup, keep finding ways to get the job done as of late and especially at home where they have been playing their better hockey for the better part of the season. 17-5-2 uh, and two at home compared to a 9-9-3 nine, nine, and three mark on the road. Uh, now, the Pittsburgh Penguins, they've been playing some decent hockey themselves, but, you know, they are coming off a 3-0 win over the Seattle Kraken. Prior to that, they had lost back-to-back -back games in overtime against Carolina and Vancouver, and I go back to it again. This is just another tough travel spot for the, for the, uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins, you know. I go back to the start of 2024. At home against Washington, travel to Boston, back home to Buff to take on Buffalo, out to Philadelphia, back home against Vancouver, out to Carolina, back home against Seattle, and now you head out for a West Coast road swing. Uh, I just, I'm not buying it with the Pittsburgh Penguins. This is just a tough spot for them. The Vegas Golden Knights at home, or you're gonna keep, you're gonna keep giving me favorable prices with them. I'm gonna keep taking them because it's not something that you see all that often. Give me the Vegas Golden Knights at even money in this one. Now we head to the Scotiabank Saddle for a battle of Alberta between the Calgary Flames and the Edmonton Oilers. And this rivalry, you know, for, for being a, a rivalry where these two teams don't like each other, you know, you've really seen in the past that these two teams like to hurt each other on the scoreboard a lot more rather than, you know, hurt each other physically and putting each other in the penalty box. That's still out there, but I would just say that, you know, the rivalry is more on the scoreboard, I, you know, I think. And, you know, the Calgary Flames are playing some decent hockey right now. They've won seven of their last ten. The problem is the Edmonton Oilers have won 12 in a row. And head-to-head, -head, the Oilers have won three straight and uh, seven of the last eight going back to the playoff series in 2022. Um, right now, I'm not stepping in front of the, in front of the Edmonton Oilers. No, the Calgary Flames are tempting uh, as a plus-money home dog in a rivalry game. But i got to go with the Edmonton Oilers here. Reasonable price at minus 150. Our final game on Saturday's card takes us to the Crypto.com Arena where the Los Angeles Kings take on the New York Rangers. And as expected, or at least as we called it here on the wraparound a couple days ago, the Los Angeles Kings getting back home didn't really matter as this team, you know, they got the win over the Carolina Hurricanes, lost to the Dallas Stars, and then lost again to the Nashville Predators. And again, goal scoring continues to be an issue for the Los Angeles Kings, who have really fallen on hard times after... Uh, after a you know a nice run of form to start the year, now they are a 500 team, 21, 13, and 8, 21 and 21. If you combine the regulation and overtime losses, and uh, like I said, just falling on hard times, and I don't see it getting any better here against New York Rangers team that continues to be one of the more consistent teams in the NHL, 13, 8, and 2 on the road this season, a very respectable road record, and you know we're getting plus money pretty much, or at least a cheaper uh, side of the coin flip price. To fade the Los Angeles Kings, who have been just terrible as of late. So, you know, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I'll take the great price wherever I can get it. Give me the New York Rangers here uh, on the money line to round things out. That's it.
That's all the NHL action for Saturday, January 20th, 2024. Again, if you like this content, smash that thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and make sure you hit that notification bell in the description of this video below to get notified when the newest and freshest content drops here at Pick Dogs. If you're looking for my best bets, make sure you head to pickdogs.com, click the premium picks tab at the top of the page, and make sure to let me know your NHL picks in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Good